Aloha! Welcome back to another episode of Scenario Design. My name is Tiki C. I am exploring how to design custom weapons for Empyrean Galactic Survival, and I would like to share my journey with you. My goal is to learn about and show you how to design a new weapon. At the end of this video series, we're going to combine everything that we've learned and design something new. So far, we've listened to all of the sound effects that we could use, we've looked at different weapon models, and we've looked at particle effects and tracers to get shot out of weapons. Today, we look at making custom icons for our new weapons. Full disclosure, I have meager artistic skills. I'm just going to share what I know. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, let's assume that we have some ideas for a few new weapons and we want to make some custom icons. Here you can see some of the basic examples that I've made. I just made black and white versions of the default icons to be used as temporary placeholders while I do testing. How did I do this? Let's walk through it step by step. The first step is to understand the requirements for icons. We are going to save our custom icons in a 100 by 100 PNG file format. Custom icons will go into the shared data, content, bundles, item icons directory of your custom scenario. Next, I went looking for existing icons that I could use to save time instead of making them from scratch. I made use of the existing icons that could be found after installing EPD in the EPD Data Images Items directory. Here you can find some of the icons from the base game. It's quick and easy to use these, adjust the colors, orientation, and make something unique. I'm going to copy some of these icons to a temp directory, and then I'm going to modify those copies. Two programs that I use for modifying icons are Pixlr and Paint.net. I am not paid to promote these products, they're free to use and they work for me. Use whatever tools work for you. In fact, leave a comment below on what you use or other options that may work. Share your knowledge with the community. Another note, ask original authors for permission. Please respect the work of artists. In paint.net, let's load one of the icons and do some edits. Let's zoom in a bit and talk about some of the things that I've done with icons. The white and gray checkered background means that it has a transparent background, which is important for icons in the game. When you transfer items to an inventory slot, it won't look like a square sheet. You can also rotate the image quickly by going to image, flip, uh, horizontal, or vertical. And you can also do fine uh, or detailed rotation and zooming with this rotate zoom tool under layers which will allow you to finely tune how you want to point it. If you don't want to point it up to the right, you point it up down to the right. Or you can uh, rotate it in three dimensions. It'll still be a flat plane, but that's fine. And you can also move it around here with this tool as well. So that's one of the things I'll do frequently is to try to adjust the icons so they are oriented correctly or however I want. I could also, for example, put an icon on here in another layer. Say for example, I wanna grab my icon here and I want to go to edit and paste that into a new layer. And then I'm going to hold down the shift button and scale it down a bit. It's gonna be pixelated because this is a 100 by 100 image. And let's say for example, I want to put my icon on the side of this weapon. I'll just hold down shift and grab this little um, dot on the edge to adjust it. And then I can, if, the, if you see the hand with the arrows, I can tilt it like so, and then move it by grabbing onto the square. And I can sort of get my icon on this gun like so. I can also grab this halo if I hit Control A and copy and go over to my icon. I'm going to paste that into a new layer as well. Say for I want a halo behind the gun. So I'll paste that over here into a new layer and grab the edge of this and scale it down a bit so that it's the size of my canvas. And you can tell that the halo is in front of the gun. So I actually want to bring this layer behind the gun. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on the layer over here and I'm going to move this move layer down and put it behind the gun and my icon. So that way I have three different layers, the gun, the icon, and the halo. And now I can save that in a PNG 
file format and just save it in my downloads directory here as a laser pistol. So now I got a copy of the standard laser pistol and I'm gonna to choose to flatten all those layers into one image. And I'm ready to use this icon in the game. It's all customized now. Another tool that I use in paint.net is the magic wand over here on the side. One of the common things I'll have to do is grab an entire area and delete it. So say we take this booster here. Basically I took one of the basic boosters and then painted the middle so that it's blue so I can use it as a blank and put different icons on there. I can use the magic icon tool. Say I want to get rid of that blue square in here and I'll click on the square. You can adjust the tolerance as needed because it might, it has to guess on what exactly you're trying to do. So now that it's highlighted, I can hit the delete button and now I have a, a, a transparent square in the middle for whatever I may need. But that's one of the things I do commonly is I'll use the magic wand a tool to grab an area and delete it quickly. There are a lot more options in paint.net and I'm just scratching the surface. Again, a lot of the things in here I don't use, but it has a lot of functionality, so it might be useful for you for icon editing. Let's move on to Pixlr. In Pixlr, we can quickly change the colors or apply different themes. For example, I have a custom weapon I'm making for someone, and this is one of the default Empyrean icons, but I want to make it a little bit snappier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Effect button over here on the left. I'm going to click on Preset. I'm going to click on Tuning, and then I'm going to make it vivid. So it'll pop a little bit more. I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to run another filter through it. I'm going to go to Effect, and then Preset, and then Urban. And then I'm going to go to Shimmer, and I'm going to hit Apply there. I'm giving it the look like it's uh, a weapon that you would find on Mars if it was invaded by demons. So <laughs> this is going to be a custom weapon for someone. And I'm just going to save that and I'm going to do a couple more customizations on this. So that's how to use Pixlr in a nutshell. All I'm doing is going to the effect tab and I'm clicking on these presets and I'm going through the presets one at a time just to try to figure out, okay, what, what do I want this weapon to look like? I like purple weapons, so I can make a lot of purple weapons in here. I can also go to adjust and filter and go to color and I can make it black and white, just like the temporary weapons that I saw earlier. So that's what I do in Pixlr. I use adjust and filter and the effect buttons and then I choose different presets in here for different colors for weapons. Okay, I have three custom icons ready for three custom weapons that I'm making for three very important people. Now that I have these customized icons ready, I can copy them over to my scenario directory. Again, I'm going to share data, content, bundles, item icons in my testing scenario directory. So I'm just going to cut and paste those over there and there they are, they are over with all of my other icons. And I have a naming standard of TTS underscore and then name. And I'll be referring to that later in ECF files and localization files. But that's all you got to do is make your custom icons and copy them over to that directory. So that's how I've been making custom icons in a nutshell. Now you know the basics of creating custom icons. There are a couple more things that we have to do in order to make our custom weapons work. The next tutorial video will be covering all of the rest of the weapon settings, templates, and localization that we have to set up. And then the final video in the series will be testing our newly designed weapons. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a great day.